Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Code with B. In the previous videos, we have learned how to create APIs on GraphQL Server. In this video, we will learn how to add security on the GraphQL Server API. APIs represent data of certain domain. So these APIs has to be secured in a way that no illegal access can be done on the server. There are two aspects of the security, the authentication and the authorization. Whenever any client tries to access the server, it needs to provide the identity and server tries to find out the user from its database or key clock or from other source. If server fails to recognize the user, it stops the process there, otherwise it will keep continuing processing the request. For a user, it is not possible to access all the API. Suppose we are talking about the banking application, so the customer can only access its own data but customer cannot access data of any other customer similarly a relationship manager can access all the data of its customer but cannot access the data of any other customer for which he is not a relationship manager so there will be a different rules for each user based on these rules it will be decided that the api can be accessed or not this whole thing is governed by the authorization now we will see how we can add authentication and the authorization in the GraphQL server. Server to identify a user, client needs to provide the data in the form of header. It could be a basic authentication or it could be a access token. So if you look the GraphQL playground, here we have an option to provide the HTTP headers. Suppose for all the APIs in this GraphQL server, the client needs to provide the authentication header. Suppose the header is auth and for the simplicity, we will just add name of a user. Now we need to restrict the server for only specific user. In the previous videos, we have done how user can provide its information in the arguments. But those arguments are accessed through the resolve method of individual for the authentication, we need a central point. Even before reaching the request to the resolve method, the authentication should be taken care of. How can we do that? While defining Apollo Server instance, we can pass one more argument. So this is context. Context is a function that takes an object and returns the another object. So the input object can have different parameter. One of them is request. Uh, so we will use request because this is of an interest right now and we will return the empty object let's print what all keys we have in the request object we can get the keys of the object from the object dot keys method and we will pass the request if you now look at the logs we have got all the keys available in the request object so now we have headers if we print the headers so you see we have got all the headers uh, we passed on the auth header which is there so we can make use of this header to identify the user we can also print the actual value of the auth header and if you look at the logs so we have got the user as we have got the auth header we can validate the user against the list of users we have for every user we have id name and role here we can create one method get user that takes name as an argument we will find a user that has a name matching with the name passed on the header. If we get such a user, we will return the user, otherwise it will return null. We will use this method in our context function. So here we will import the get user from the users. We will define a const user and we will call the get user method. We will pass the auth header as an argument. Here we can check if user is null, then through the invalid user error. Let's run the API with the header. So here you see that we have got the error that contains a message which we have provided invalid user. Along with this, there is another information uh, which is a stack trace of the error. This is there because by default the Apollo server is in debug mode. We can make it false by passing up one more property debug false. If you run the API again, there is internal server error. The internal server error is because we have thrown the error. So in Apollo server for the authentication issues, we have authentication error. So we can make use of that. 
if we just change the message from error to authentication error now we have got unauthenticated so this code clearly tells there is an issue with the authentication so client can fix that by providing the proper authentication value if we pass the user which is there in our list so it returns the proper result so this was about the authentication now we will look at authorization so we have different kind of resources get product and the create product suppose for creating the product we need a user with role admin we have context object here so we need the user information within the context we can add that in the context method that we have defined so we have find out the user if this user is there then we can return it from the context object if you look at the console log of the context so we have got this user added to the existing context object so anything from this method will return added to the context object so now we have this user added to the context we can extract that in the resolve method and from this user we will check if user has role admin then only we will allow the request to proceed further otherwise we will throw the error that user is unauthorized so now if we create the product with a user say user2 user2 has a role admin so a new product will be created so now if we just change the role to user1 so in this case it fails because user1 does not have any right to create the product same behavior we can introduce with the get product listing and here we will add one more role cus so admin and cus role can access the product let's get all the products with their name so for user 2 it works for user 1 it works but if we change the user to user 3 it fails because user 3 does not have either of these role admin or cus in these examples we have seen how to add authorization and authentication in our query but you might have noticed that the authorization logic is spread across the resolver having this logic distributed around the resolvers could lead to a problem especially when we are dealing with different kind of authorization mechanism in the upcoming videos we will look at how we can create graphql directives to have this authorization logic Till then, happy coding!